In this presentation, we will categorize payroll payments within QuickBooks Online. We'll be For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Using our first method first, and this will be the method that coincides with our bookkeeping process in the easiest way. In other words, it fits into the process of just taking the transactions from the bank statement putting them into the QuickBooks system. We're just gonna take the net checks, in other words, and put them into the QuickBooks system. To do this, however, we need to be dependent on some outside source, third party, to help us with the payroll process, something like an ADP or a Paychex, to process the payroll, make sure the withholdings are being taken, and all that information, so that we can then take the net check, take that information and put it into the QuickBooks system. We also, have, of course, need to talk with the tax preparer at the end of the year and just make sure that the tax preparation is uh, done correctly with regards to payroll, with regards to the payroll needs. Great opportunity for networking there, both with tax preparer, CPA firm, and or uh, payroll professionals in that format. What we're gonna do then here is take the net check and just in essence categorize it as it clears the bank into a uh, into a payroll account as we do so we're not going to have the detail will depend on the detail being from adp or paychecks and then we'll have the net check that will then be in the system and as we pay the payroll taxes on a cash basis we'll have all the information as basically payroll expense within our quickbooks system here we are in our guitar lessons and equipment file. We're now gonna to go to the reports to take a look at these items. So the reports are gonna be on the left side. So we'll select the reports and we're gonna be concentrating on the profit and loss reports because that's where we categorized our items as uncategorized, as uncategorized expenses or uncategorized income. We're concentrated on the expenses here. So we're gonna to go to the profit and loss and then within the profit and loss, we'll change the dates up top from 010119 to 022819 and then we're going to run that report so we've been entering the data we've entered the data directly into the check register that's the system that we have been doing here and we have some of these items into uncategorized expenses some of those including items we suspect to be payroll if we go through our open items so that what we've done then is take the information from the bank statements such as this this is february's bank statement entered it directly into the system and you'll recall we had a question about the items for adam hamilton and erica which were both on the february as well as the january bank statement which looked to us like it might be payroll we're going to say now we have our open items so if we look at our open items list then we had in uh, january and february this note here we're saying hey there's erica and, and adam looks like it could possibly be a payroll what is the payroll system? How is payroll being processed? How can we set up payroll, make it as easy for us on the bookkeeping side and as, as well as uh, compliance with any payroll regulations? So we're gonna assume now it is payroll and the payroll then is gonna be done by a third party uh, like a paychex or an ADP. And now we're just gonna see the check as we have already seen, it's hit the bank. Now what has hit the, the bank, however, is just the net check. If we go to the check here, we're going to say, all right, that's the net check. It's not the gross pay. I can't see the withholdings to it. What we want to do, the easiest system for us in our system is, is to coincide with what we're doing. It's just to say, hey, I'm just going to record that as payroll, the net check. I'm not providing the paychecks. We're not providing the detail of it. That's got to be done by the third party, the paychecks or ADP in some format. We'll explore some other options as well. We could process payroll. We'll take a look at that as well, but that's going to be a bit of a deviation from the, our method here where, where we are just taking the information directly from the bank statement. So that's going to be our system and we'll record the payment here. That'll be the net check. And then when we make any payments for the payroll liabilities, uh, we'll then record the liabilities because we'll see them on the bank statement and then we'll record them as basically payroll expense or payroll taxes, probably payroll expenses as well, and put them all in one account. And then uh, the timing will be off, you'll see from an accrual standpoint, because we're waiting once again until the actual checks clear, rather than when the employees worked and earned the revenue. But it should all basically wash out in terms of the total expenses between payroll taxes and 
the uh, payroll wages themselves. Um, it's just the timing difference when when the expenses happen versus when they got paid. That's going to be the, be the issue. And also, uh, if we have any questions about it and we need to see the detail of what the actual payroll was, then we have to go to the detailed reports, which are typically pretty detailed and good if we have a third party provider such as a paychecks or ADP. So if that's our case, then all we're going to do is go back in, in here and reassign these checks. So we're going to go into our system within QuickBooks. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can find the checks within QuickBooks. And your first instincts might just be to go to the register, to go to accounting and then go to the register and find those checks. That works. You'll be able to do it that way. But the easier method is to go to the account that we had put these to. We put these to the uncategorized account. So we're going to go to the profit and loss and then go from the end product, the financial statements, back to the questioning items. That's why we set it up this way. And so that's what we'll do here. You also might have a, a tendency to go to the balance sheet and look at the cash account and go to find the, the check within the cash account through this kind of same method, but the cash account. Again, not quite as effective because there's going to be a ton of stuff in the cash account, just like there's a ton of stuff in the register. Whereas there's not a ton of stuff in the uncategorized expense. There's still kind of a lot. We had a lot of questions, but <laughs> there's a lot less than there would be just looking through the entire register. So uh, even though we could find it fairly easily with the date and whatnot here, but it's just, this is the fastest way to do it. So we're in here, we're going to select this item. And then here's all the items we had questions about. And then if we're, we're looking for the basically the Adam check so here's the check to adam here's the check to erica and obviously it's on the 31st it's at the end of the time period and that coincides with, with what was on the bank statement so we just entered it just as the bank statement however we entered it into this uncategorized we know what it is now it's a payroll check and we're just going to enter this net check into payroll so what we're going to do is just select that item and we're going to just change the expense account so this takes us back to the check not the register but the check same kind of data input type field and then we're just going to change the category from uncategorized to payroll now if we had purchased payroll then quickbooks would have set up a payroll account for us but we didn't purchase payroll because we're not running payroll in here and it would be a separate purchased item so we have to set up then a payroll expense and you could call it payroll expense wages expense you know employees expense something like that but obviously it's something payroll kind of the most generic kind of uh, system we can use if you use wages then it might include a salary or or imply salaries or imply non-salaries if you use salaries then you could be specific about the type of pay so payroll is going to be fairly general and note we're going to put both the payroll expense in terms of the net check and the payroll taxes grouped together in just this one expense account so then we're going to say tab and set it up it's going to be an expense type of account not really advertising if we have another type of sub account that we can have here if here's a payroll expense so we'll take the payroll expense type of account looks good up top so we're going to say save and that'll be it now we could put a note into the payroll into this and that would always good to have a little bit more detail we're not going to do it here though we're going to say save and close and the transaction has been reconciled so it's basically saying you already did the bank reconciliation uh, and so you want to be careful of any kind of changes you make after doing the bank reconciliation. But we're not changing the date or we're not changing it out of the checking account here. It's still coming out of the checking account. So we should be okay with that. And we're going to say, yes, keep the modification. Once we do so, it's going to be removed from this account. If we go back up top and go back to our report summary, we should then find a new account that will be payroll expense. So we just moved it up to payroll expense. So we took it out of here, uncategorized, just moved it up. And we're just going to continue with this process until the uncategorized is zero and all these items in it are categorized somewhere. So we're going to have to do this a few more times. So we'll select this item. And now we had another one on the 31st for Erica. So here's Erica, another payroll. Same thing. We're just going to select it. You can see how easy QuickBooks allows us just to change this. I'm just going to change this account. And now we're just going to call it payroll. We could just start typing it in there. Payroll expense. That's the one we want. And then just save and close. And we're going to save the change. And then once again, if we go back to the report, it should be out of there. And now it's in payroll. So if we select payroll expense, there's the two checks. We're just reassigning them. 
not changing net income at all. It's just taken it out of uncategorized and putting it into a more properly assigned expense account. And then we're going to go to that. We're going to do the, the ones for February now. So we'll go in there again. Same thing for February. At the end of February, we had two checks, one to Erica, one to Adam. We'll do Erica's first here because it's first in order for some reason. So we'll check that item. We'll go down here and we're going to say payroll. That's the one we want. Payroll expense. That's the one. And then we're going to say save and close. And yes. And then we'll do this one more time for Adam Hamilton. Checking off Adam Hamilton. And scrolling down and once again changing this to payroll expense. That's the one we want. That's the one. And then save and close that. Looks good. And so now we've, we've removed those from here. If we go back up top. We can see then, of course, the uncategorized has gone down and the payroll expense has gone up. This is really a, a huge benefit with QuickBooks kind of flexibility to allow us to do this. Now, it's also there are also some problems with QuickBooks flexibility. As you'll see with the note, it tries to tell us things like, hey, you already reconciled this. Maybe this will cause a problem. And sometimes things do cause problems. So we've got to be careful with things like that. But that's the pros and cons of the flexibility. So within this system, because of the flexibility, because QuickBooks allows us to go back in and just kind of change the account, we can set up a system to, to know, to, to have a, a clearing account that we know is going to be reassigned. And that really allows us to push forward and then enter the data and then go back in and reassign those very easily by just going through that account and reassigning them. So that's going to be the, the first way we can do this. Note that as, as we do this process, we're going to assign this amount, which is the net check. And we're also going to assign the payroll taxes here once they're paid. In other words, the company is going to have to withhold payroll taxes and have their own payroll taxes, which they'll have to pay in the future. And when they pay it, we'll see it on the bank statement. And when we see it on the bank statement, we're just going to call it basically payroll expense again and record it here. So at the end of the year, note when you do taxes, they, they might, the taxes professional might want to break out the payroll expense between payroll taxes and, and payroll. And we can't really do that on our side under this system unless we use the, the ADP reports to break it out in, in more detail because the, the, payroll, the payroll taxes that are paid will include both employee and employer portions. So it's not easy for us to break it out. So what we're going to do is put it all in the payroll expense and then give it to the tax preparer at the end of the year and say, hey, here's, here's the ADP person. Here's the reports that they have. We've recorded both payroll taxes and the payroll expense in one account. If you want to break those out between payroll taxes and expenses for tax preparation, like income tax preparation, then here's the ADP reports and you should be able to take those reports and do that, do that breakout. Otherwise, if we wanted to do it, we could we could take the ADP reports and break it out. But it's a it's a little bit more complex to do that, uh, and everything kind of washes out on the expense side on a cash basis. But it just takes the timing difference takes a little bit of time, and of course, these two things, those two items, then are grouped together in just one kind of payroll expense account rather than breaking out the payroll taxes. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.